Let's stand for the reading of God's holy word. Turn in your Bibles to 1 Corinthians 10:13. And then hold your finger at James 1.13. 1 there hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. And then James chapter 1 verse 13 reads thusly, Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. Never. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. God does not tempt you with evil. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust. in his own flesh and enticed enticed by who oftentimes by the devil enticed by the devil not god then when lust hath conceived it bringeth forth sin and sin when it is finished bringeth forth death every time one evangelist said this past week that sin begins with a thought. Let's pray. Holy Father God, we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We praise you and we thank you for your holy word, and particularly this passage. Uh, Lord, you just thought of everything. You gave us all of the tools and all of the knowledge and information that we need to live a victorious Christian life. And so, Holy Father, God, where we have failed you, it is our fault. For Jesus Christ's sake, please forgive us of our sins, our faults, and our failures. Crush and crucify our flesh and the old man within us all, and fill us all with the power of your Holy Spirit. Deliver us from temptation, evil, and sin, and help us to love right, live right, think right, and do right for your glory your praise, and your honor, that others may come to know your Savior, as we have by your grace. In Jesus Christ's name we pray, and for his sake, amen. You may be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, the first part of this verse that we're dealing with today is pretty self-explanatory. God does test his children from time to time to see if they're going to be faithful to him. Some of you are going under and going through a test right now to see whether or not you're going to be faithful to God or if you're going to love money and material things and people more than you love God. Your faith must be tested. But God never tempts us to do evil. Can somebody say amen? For you would have to be evil to tempt somebody to do evil. There are men in this world who are evil and the young lady is not as evil not experienced with the wiles of the devil and the wiles of slick men 
and they tempt young women to do evil with them because they are evil. God is not that way. God is not evil. So it's impossible for God to tempt you and me to do evil. Can anybody in here join me in saying amen to that? God is not evil, therefore he can't tempt people to do evil. It is the devil who entices us to do evil. And the devil will use devilish people to tempt us to do evil. Ashley Madison uh, is being used of the devil, devil to tempt men to do evil, to commit adultery. Uh, they entice us by saying, live a little, commit adultery. Let some steam off, commit adultery. Enjoy your life, commit adultery. They are enticing you to go against what God told you uh, to do. But what happens is, is this, every time, from the word of God. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin, my God, my God. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Every time you can count on it. Death to your physical life. Death to your spiritual life. Death to your marriage. Death to your relationships. Death to everything. Sin is far more destructive then Harvey, Katrina, and Rita combine. Can somebody say amen? Sin is the most destructive force on earth, my dear friend. And so we can never blame our temptations or our sins on God. Never, never, never. You can try to blame your father, you can try to blame your mother, you can try to blame your sister or your brother, you can try to blame your counselor, but you can't blame God for your temptations and your sins. Now the meaning of this verse can be applied to any sin or temptation, but its specific terminology makes it appropriate to the temptation of lust and various types of sexual sin. Verse 14 lets us know that the devil is not the only agent in our temptation, and we're going to pretty much park right here today. Because a big part of the temptations we face don't just come from the devil. They come from us. We are uh, as well. A big part of the temptations that we face and deal with. It says every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and, uh, and uh, then enticed. You got some lust inside of you. Dr. A.B. Simpson wrote in his commentary on this passage, Temptation comes from your own wicked, evil heart and flesh. Starting out, there are innumerable tempters, men, women, and fallen spirits of wickedness. Of course, the devil, but none have any power unless we have a traitor in the citadel of our hearts. Can somebody say amen? A Judas 
on the inside. The enemy cannot get in unless you let him in. You hold the key of the fortress. Therefore, it is in your own heart that the crucial battle is fought. The secret foe is hidden. Your own lust, your own flesh, your own wicked heart. You're the one, sir, that wants that fine, voluptuous, fat woman that you see on the commercial. Uh, not just the devil wanting you to go after her, but you want it yourself. And the devil knows it, so he entices you. He tells you, go get it, go get it. Your own desire or coveting, which is the literal translation, the thing in you that wants to do the wrong thing. We have too many folk in the church today blaming the devil. Uh, when it's me, it's me, it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. I'm the one. I have the problem deep down in my heart, in my flesh. I know the devil is busy. I know he's tempting and enticing and baiting me. Uh, but I'm the one that can say no. And allow me to share with you, beloved, how most of us grow. to say no. God will, if you refuse to say no on your own, say no to your flesh, say no to your evil, wicked heart, say no to the enticements that come your way and you start talking stupid like, I just can't help myself. I just can't help myself. I can't keep myself back from looking at that beautiful fine woman on uh, the pornography channel. I can't help myself. I can't stop myself from lusting at this man. One lady said she, she's 79 years old, bless her heart. The man is 81. She said this past week, Jane Fonda said, I live for the sexual scenes that Robert Redford and I had. I said, wow. And, uh, there's some sins go deep. And there are people like that all across this country filled with lust, filled with memories of pleasurable sin that, that they yielded to. And at the same time filled with guilt and oftentimes filled with an STD as well for life. Sin is never pretty, baby. You can fix it up all you want to, but sin is a bad boy. And as someone said many years ago, sin will take you further than you wanted to go, keep you longer than you wanted to stay, and make you pay more than you wanted to pay. There are young women, beautiful, promising young women who are dead today. Some can't be found because they took the bait. Some have been raped. Why? Because they took the bait. They were enticed, but their wicked flesh wanted to do it. The evil in you, the lust in you, the bad boy in you, the bad girl in you, that's the starting point. The devil just entices you and tempts you. Don't bow your head yet. It's not time to pray. 
but God will help you if you're a child of God. And we're talking to children of God today, by the way. When I was lost and on my way to hell and didn't even know it, I was not tempted. I was, I was the tempter, and the temptation was me. I was the walking temptation. You might as well call me a part of the temptations, the singing group. I was it. I was not tempted with anything. I was looking for temptation. I was the tempter. I was all over it and all into it. I, I, uh, why are we not sinning right now was my question. What is the holdup? Why are we not partying right now? Why are we not getting drunk right now? Why we don't have two or three babes right now? What is the problem? I thought we were sinning if we were not engaged in tempting and temptation. I'm not talking to lost people. I'm talking to saved people. People who are saved, they're the only ones who are tempted with evil. If you're not saved, you're saying, what are you talking about? I got everything I want right here. I, I'm going to get it. I'm not tempted with it. I got it. I, here it is. Uh, I, I, I'm riding down the road with porno, uh, pornographic videos blurring in the back seat and in the front. What are you talking about? Uh, being tempted with pornography. Only Christian people, godly people, people who are born again are tempted. So I'm talking to you. And I'm letting you know that you are part a big part of the temptation process because you still got evil in you you still got mr. bad in you and uh, ma'am you got miss bad in you you know you're wicked as the devil you don't fool nobody but I have my church hat on and I got my church outfit on hold it I have my uh, uh, church stockings on and my church shoes and uh, you're not talking to me I look like an angel I look like a saint I look godly I look holy uh, yeah but you got evil in your wicked heart and you don't fool nobody and you certainly don't fool God You're just wrong on the inside, and therefore you do the wrong thing. Your wish for it, even if it is not yet your will, is there. Uh, can somebody say amen somewhere? This is the starting place of temptation. It is the blossom of sin, if you will, is the end of the quote. Beloved, the devil does not arbitrarily throw temptation our way and wait to see what sticks. Now, he does get a little crazy every now and then and just start throwing the kitchen sink and everything else at you. Uh, when he's not getting you to do like you used to do. He is a cunning foe. He watches us. He finds our weaknesses. And then sends the temptation that is most likely to cause us to stumble and fall. I have no other weakness in life but find voluptuous, sweet, fat, beautiful women. That's my only temptation. And the sweeter they are, I don't, I'm not talking about whores and prostitutes. I have never been interested in whores and prostitutes. I'm not interested in the women on the pornography screen. I, I'm interested in not only a fine woman on the outside, but, 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 but sweet on the inside. There's nothing like it on God's green earth. And you say, why are you so honest about that? Why are you so transparent about that? Number one, that's the only, my only temptation. Number two, God knows about it, the devil knows about it, and I know about it. My wife knows about it, she's sitting right here. And you say, well, why aren't you doing it? Why are you not falling into it? Uh, because God has chastised me very well. He has taken me to the woodshed. 
You say, well, preacher, uh, yeah, everybody's getting a little chastisement every now and then, but, uh, but when God gets a hold of you, it's a, a different ball game. And he made it very clear to me in no uncertain terms. Don't do that. He said, why are you not doing it? Because before God chastised me, I did not fear God as I should. But after God chastised me and took me to the woodshed and whipped my behind for a long period of time, this is why I tell people, don't get God started on you. Go ahead and repent now. Confess your sins now. Stop doing the evil now. Because if God gets started on you, he is very, in the words of Curtis Hudson, very thorough. And also, I'm honest and transparent about it because there are certain ministries I don't need to be involved in. In the words of uh, Dr. Piper, I don't need to be in the beach ministry. Uh, 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 I'm, I'll, I'll pass out tracks anywhere. But I don't need to go to uh, what they call a spring break. I've never been to spring break. I don't need to go to those ministries where women uh, are dressing immodestly, uh, are, uh, naked, uh, half naked. I, I don't need to do that. That's it. That, that would be a huge uh, temptation for me. That's just like me knocking the devil out of the way and so say, I'll just tempt myself. Devil, you know, I don't need you. <laughs> I don't need you today. I'm going down here with this brother here who has a beach ministry. Oh, oh everybody got a ministry. I don't need to be in the XXX church ministry. Bless his heart. He goes into uh, porn places and tries to win the people to the Lord and, and God bless him and people who are in, in the porn industry got his wife out of the porn industry I don't need to go to that industry I don't need to minister to those people you say well, you ought to be concerned about winning souls of you I am that's why God raised this man up evidently he can handle it and there are some men I don't know what kind of uh uh, what kind of uh, genes they have in them or whatever. There are some men who can work in ministries where they're not bothered by the women, you know, and, and who are dressed immodestly, who are not saved. God bless them. I'm not one of them. Say, well, preacher, why are you so transparent about that? You ought to try to cover that up. No, tell the truth, people, and shame the devil. That's what's wrong with the church today. Everybody's covering up stuff. And then, like the boogeyman, you jump out the closet. Wow, here I am. With all my wickedness. I didn't confess to anybody that I struggled with this sin and that. Hold it straight. And then there's a scandal because nobody knew that this was your weakness because you acted strong in all areas. You hypocrite. Tell the truth and shame the devil. Be honest about it. God already knows about you. Let others know about you so that they can be protected and forewarned. The way we combat this, beloved, is by recognizing and acknowledging our own weaknesses. As what I just, like I just did. So if you see me walking off into Hooters, like my oldest son, uh, and I, we were at a, movie theater and they were not going in the boys were not going in the girls were going in I said well let's drive around and see where you can go uh, and sit and do your computer work and so forth and so on and we turned to our left and zip bam boom there was a hooters I said I said no we we can't go there can we 
if you see me walking off in the hooters with the ladies pretty much bare their breasts, then you need to come and get me. Let's go help this preacher. He, he, you, you'll know that I don't need to be going in the hooters. Can somebody say amen? I, I don't need to be in hooters talking about ministering and doing my work because I will be distracted by the breasts hanging out. So if you ever see me, the great prophet Daniel White III, walking up in to Hooters with his Bible on his arm and his computer and everything, come and get me. I have temporarily lost my mind. It's okay. Help a brother out. He's being drawn. He's being tempted. He has justified. He's lied to himself, and he's justifying uh, doing this. So let's go get him. Be honest about your weaknesses. And your weakness may not be mine. Mine may not be yours. Whatever it is. There are some people ought not to ever even sniff a glass of wine or any kind of other uh, alcoholic beverage. You ought, not to, you ought not to even ride by bar. You ought not to ride by specs. You have absolutely no control over your alcohol consumption. You know it. You already been in jail, DUI, and everything else. Uh, you, you, you can't even smell alcohol and you're gone. Your daddy was like that. Your grandfather was like that. You were raised by a bunch of drunkards and you were drunk too. And you, don't, you know you are not to get even near it. Because, and then when you do drink, you get crazy. You want to fight somebody. You want to cut somebody. You want to shoot somebody. You temporarily lose your mind. We, you, don't need that. you don't even need to go near. You are not even by NyQuil. Just don't buy nothing. Just suffer with it. You ought to take nothing. You got some folk. Bless the heart in the summertime. Eh? The, uh, nothing is wrong with them. They go down to the drugstore. They want alcohol so bad they get some NyQuil or any other kind of uh, cough medicine. They're not even coughing. They drink some alcohol. You liar. Some of you, some of you, you are not to ever go into a convenience store because you're going to be tempted. You get all sweaty and nervous because you want to gamble. Your father was a gambler. Went out to Las Vegas, lost everything, and stayed. Your grandfather it, it was a gambler. Now you tempted with it. You, you didn't have a few cards in your hand. You didn't want fifty six dollars. Now you, you think you got the hot hand. You're going for the millions. And you run your family out of house and home trying to gamble. You just can't help it. You can't help yourself. You're not to give a penny to the convenience store for a ticket, for a card. You say, preacher, have you ever, have you ever bought a, a lottery ticket in your life? You know your ministry has always needed some money. Have you ever, uh, I've never bought a lottery ticket in my life. I've never been tempted to buy a lottery ticket. I've, I've been tempted to knock some folk out of the way who's standing in line getting a lottery ticket when I'm trying to get something to drink. I've been tempted with that. Will you please move? Would you excuse me, you gambler? <laughs> I've never been tempted to buy a gambling card or to gamble anything or to go to Las Vegas and pull the slot or nothing. I'm not that me to me that's a very, very disgusting and sad and pitiful life. But that's not my temptation. That's somebody else's though. In the millions. And we ought not to look down, I don't know, and, and some of these same gamblers and some of these same drunkards are not tempted with beautiful, fair, fine women like I am. I think my temptation is better, but whatever. Too many people in the church act as if they have no weaknesses. I got some liars in my family, they have no weaknesses. They're not tempted with anything, but they're mean as a junkyard dog. It's not, oh, but they're holier than, they're holier than thou. They dress holy. They 
look holy, but they're mean as the devil, they're mean as a snake. And they act like as if they cannot be touched by temptation or sin. Uh, we have one uh, family member that says, I just see people, I don't see nobody. I'm not tempted with that. J. Vernon McGee said, it seems a common practice today for Christians to try to cover their temptations, their sins, their weaknesses, their failures. You will find in the average church that there is a band-aid of silence wrapped over the cancer of sin. My God, my God, I wish I had said that. But nobody can say it like J. Vernon McGee. He'll say it with a twang. A Texas twang. Old Methodist preacher, by the way. I cut my teeth on J. Vernon McGee. He said, in the, in the church today, there's a band-aid of silence over the cancer of sin. Oh, I can't get that Texas twang. People don't like to talk about it. In fact, they don't admit its existence. They look so holy. They look so sweet and so wonderful. Walking, I'm saying this, walking devils, hypocrites, phonies, and fakes in the church. It's disgusting. They like to think they are very good people. He finished. Of course, the Bible tells us clearly, my beloved, that none of us are good. Each of us is capable of sin if the right temptation comes along at the right time. Unless we are willing to admit that, we will never be able to gain continuous and consistent victory over temptation in our lives. Tell the truth, people, and shame the devil. Stop hiding the evil that is in your heart with a band-aid covering the cancer of sin in your heart, your mind, and in your life. We got some folk in the church who are homosexuals, got a band-aid around the cancer of the sin in their lives. We have some folk in the church who are addicted, as they say, to pornography. A band-aid wrapped around the cancer of their sin. We got people who are addicted to lying. They're liars from day one. They wake up lying. Uh, they were in the womb lying. They came out lying. They would rather lie to you than tell you the truth. They're natural liars. They lie so much, they believe it themselves. Have you ever been around a liar like that? You know every time they open their mouth, they're going to tell you a lie. They lie so much that they believe it themselves, and then if you don't believe their lie, they'll get mad at you. Wrapped up with a band-aid around the cancer of the sin of lying. Some people lie so much they don't even think about it anymore. They just lie. They know they're going to lie from Jump Street. Wake up in the morning. Husband says, how are you doing? Fine. And lie. That's the first lie of the day. Mad as the devil, huffing and puffing. Stop. Have you ever been on these people that every time you see them, they... Always jerking like they're angry, <laughs> blowing, <laughs> and you ask them to go do something, they <sighs> fix, fix my plate. I'll fix your plate, all right. Mad as the devil. How can you be fine? You mad as the devil. Fry me an egg. <laughs> Shh. 
Fry me. I'm going to fry your egg, all right. <laughs> Smoke billowing out the house. People think that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, think we got a grill uh, restaurant over here or something. Man, it's, you hear all kind of noises from these angry people. They, they, they knocking things over on purpose, making noise. Just, just want to show that they're angry. But they just told you they were fine. They, they're not fine. They're mad as they can be. Lying. So, beloved, if you struggle with lust or any sin or temptation, take this passage to heart and begin to use it the next time you face temptation. Holy Father God, we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We pray for Christians who are battling temptation. Thank you for revealing to some and reminding others that much of the temptation is inside of us, our own lust, our own flesh, the bad side of us. And then when we are enticed and we connect those two, then Sin produces death in every way. So, Holy Father God, we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy and grace upon those of us who are Christians, wherever we are stage-wise in our Christian life, forgive us of our sins, our failures, and our faults, and help us to repent and to turn from our wicked, evil ways. And uh, help us to do as the song has said, and your holy word has told us more importantly. Help us to yield not to temptation, for yielding is sin. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake. Amen. Now, beloved, before I leave you today, if you do not yet know my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. He has a message for you. He said these words to you and to me. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The Bible also says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou, you, shalt be saved. Getting saved is very simple. Yes, it is very easy. It was not simple and easy for God. There are ministers trying to make it difficult for you, but why would God make something so important difficult for ignorant and sinful people as we are? Simply believe on the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, believing in your heart that he died for your sins, was buried, and rose again. For the Bible says very simply, in Romans 10, 9, and 13, that if you shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God have raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How about it, dear friend? Are you ready to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ? Are you believing on the Lord Jesus Christ right now? Are you ready and willing to pray to him and ask, you, ask him to save you? He will do so right now. Let's pray together. Repeat after me phrase by phrase and mean it from your heart. Holy Father God, I acknowledge that I am a sinner. And that I have broken your commandments. I have done wrong in your sight and with others and in the sight of others. I have been in church, but I have been a hypocrite. For Jesus Christ's sake, please have mercy and grace upon me and forgive me of all of my sins.
As I now believe with all of my heart in the Lord Jesus Christ, that he died for my sins, was buried, and rose again. Lord Jesus, please come into my heart and save my soul. And change my life. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. And help me to repent of my sins past. And to follow you in the new life. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. And for his sake. Amen. My beloved, if you trust it. The Lord Jesus Christ is your Savior today, and you pray that prayer with me, and you meant it from your heart. I declare to you that based upon the Word of God, the Bible, you are now saved from sin and hell, and you are on your way to heaven. Welcome to the family of God, dear friend. I want to congratulate you on doing the most important thing in life, and that is believing on the Lord Jesus Christ and asking Him to save you. For more information to help you grow in your newfound faith in Christ, please go to gospelightsociety.com and read my pamphlet, What to Do, after you enter through the door. Jesus Christ said in John 10, 9, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Until next time, my beloved, may the Lord bless you and keep you is my prayer. Let's stand.